hello everyone welcome back to my youtube channel welcome back to another tutorial it's me ij and i'm back with a new tutorial today's tutorial we are going to diy a fish skirt with tail or a trumpet skirt with tail we all know that the christmas season is fast approaching so if you don't have money or if you don't have yet of material to make your six pieces skirt or eight pieces skirt don't bother you are going to rock this is fish skirt with tail it's going to look beautiful for my new subscribers you are on the right channel old subscribers you guys are amazing i give you a thumbs up so guys now let me show to you guys the down part of this skirt that we are going to diy guys this is the down part of this fish skirt with tail that i've just diy two yards of sokoba fabric by 60 that is what i used to achieve this beautiful fish skirt with tail so let me turn the back for you guys to see do you see the back do you see how flowing the back is that is with the tail do you see it so that is it so beautiful with just two yards of sokoba material i achieved this beautiful skirt so guys without wasting much of your time let us go to the working table i folded my material after cutting the front panel we will use it to cut out the back panel then i will show to you guys how to cut out also the tail of the back so now we are going to start by taking the length of the skirt we are making the length is 45 because the more it is long the more it flows so i'm going to use 45 inches by length so let me mark it out so here is my starting point as you can see i've ruled it here is the starting point so from this starting point i'm going to mark the length this is the length 45 plus one inch to hem it that is 46 so i will extend it to this side that is 46 so now we have the length of our skirt so from here to here is the length of our skirt, which is 46 inches. And now we are going to insert our waist measurement. From this starting point, we are going to insert our waist. The waist we are working with is 34 divided by 4 is going to be 8.5. So we mark our 8.5 here. Then we will need that. Then we'll use one inch as our dart. One inch as our dart. This is a stretchy material. You can add half inch seam allowance or you can add one inch seam allowance. I'm going to go by half inch seam allowance because I would like it to be fitted. So I'll mark my half inch seam allowance. Remember, this is 8.5, the waist, seam, uh, the dart allowance is 10 one inch plus half inch seam allowance which is 10 inches here so from this 10 inches this is the 10 inch and this is the waistline from this waistline let us measure our from the waist to the hip the length is usually eight or nine inches mine is eight inches so i'm going to place at eight here is eight inches that is the waist so the hip here is eight inches and we are going to make a straight line to it so on this hip i'll insert my hip measurement the hip measurement i'm working is 42 divide it by four you are going to have 10.5 so i'm going to mark at 10.5 here I don't want any ease at the hip. I will just add half inch sewing allowance because I want it to be fitted. So this is the measurement of the hip line. So now from this waist, I'm going to determine the, from the waist, I'm going to measure from the waist to the knee. This is where, this is where that is so important in making a fish skirt. That is where the flowing will start. So now I will measure from my waist. This is the waist. Measure to my knee. 
from my waist to my knee is 19 inches. This is 19 inches. This is so important in making a fitted fish skirt. This part we are now drafting. So guys, this is 19. I mark it at 19. Do you see it? So on this 19, I'm going to take away from this hip, what we have here is 11 inches. Remember, 10 and half plus half inch sewing allowance is 11 inches. So I'm going to take away one and a half inch from it. So I'm going to be left with nine and a half inch. So I'm going to bring that nine and a half inch here at this knee. But for me to walk freely, I'm going to come up. I'm not going to take the measurement from exactly the knee here. I'm going to come up by three inches. From this knee, I will come up by three inches here so that I can walk freely. If you measure it here, it will be uncomfortable. You cannot walk freely, except it is for a photo shoot. You just stand at a place and take the photos. If not, it will be uncomfortable. So from this knee, I now go up by three inches. This is where my flowing will now start. So here I'll mark my line. So on this new line, I'm going to insert nine and a half inch. Nine and a half inches. Do you see it? This is where I'm going to insert my nine and a half inch. That is where the flowing is going to start. Is here. So we now work on this upper part. Then we'll now go to the down. So let's let us connect our lines from the waist. I'll connect to the hip. From the waist, I connect to the hip. And from the hip, I connect to where we came up by three inches. Do you see it? So from here now, on the down part of it, how do you want it to flow? If you have enough material, the more material you have, the more it will flow. If you have a less material, it is going to be less. So the minimum you can do is to times your hip by two. So 10.5 times it by two, you are going to have 21 inches. So I'm going to mark 21 inches here at this hem of the skirt. So here, I mark my 21 inches inches do you see it exactly my material is 21 you can equally times your hip by three by four depending on how you want it to flow the more material you have the more inches you give the more your skirt flows so from here now that we came up by three inches for us to walk freely i'm going to connect it to the 21 inches here I'm going to connect it to the 21 inches. So I will use my long ruler, just place it in this form and connect it. Do you see it? I've connected it. So now the next thing to do, I'll come up by two inches because I don't want it. Let me rule it good. So here, I'll come up by two inches because I don't want it to be tip in this form. Then I'll use my hip cuff to connect it. Do you see it? I'll use it to connect it. Do you see it? So that is the way we are going to cut it out. So guys, here. So guys, let us cut it out. I have cut out the front panel and I've used it to cut out the back panel. Do you see it? So this is the front. This is the front panel and I place it, just place it and add one inch at the back for the zip. 
which I have done. This is the one inch at the back for the zip. Do you see it? I have cut it out. Now, guys, having cut out our back panel with the front panel, the next thing now to do is to trim off the front panel. But before then, let us determine where our dart is going to be. Remember, to achieve your dart, you are going to use your nipple to nipple measurement. So the nipple to nipple measurement I'm using is 4 inches. So from here, I'm going to mark my 4 inches. Do you see it? This is my 4 inches. Then I'm going to notch it. So I notch it. Do you see it here? So from there, at the back sides, remember you place the back and the front in achieving this that. While sewing on the front, come down by four inches. On the front, come down by four, in four inches. And on the waist, take in half, half inch. Remember it is one inch that that you are going to take. So on each of the side, you take in half inch and you come down also by four inch while sewing it. And on the back, you come down by five inches. Come down by five inches. On the front, come down by four inches. And also taking your half, half inch for the, that. So the next thing to do now also is to trim off the front panel to ease the area of the abdomen, the under abdomen, to ease it, to make it fitted. So you are going to come down by half inch here. And from there, you connect it to this side of the waist. So you connect it here with your curve also. That is to ease the area of the stomach. Do you see it? It makes it look fitted. So now the next thing for us to do is to cut it out. Just place it good. Take your scissors and cut it out. Do you see it? You cut it out. And remember to notch back your four inches for the darts. If you have lose it while cutting it, you notch it back. So that you can take your half inch. So guys, the next thing now is to show to you guys how to cut out the tail of this skirt. Achieve the tail. So at this back panel, now the zip line, it depends on where you want your tail to be. But it's better to be two inches below the zip. There it gives a little much fitting. So here, from my zip line, it is... 8 inches plus same allowance, it is 8 and a half. So here is 8 and a half. So from this 8 and a half now, I now came down to 4 inches. So this is where my, my tail is going to start. So I'm going to measure what I have here as my length. From this 4 inches, I will measure it down. So what I have is 36 inches. Do you see it? I have 36 inches. So that is what I have. So this length now is what I'm going to use to cut out the tail. But I'll show to you guys how to fold it and how to cut it. So from here, we need the length is 36. That is where the tail is going to be fixed. From where the tail is going to be fixed to the hem of the skirt is 36 inches. So now let us draft the Tail. It's my material. I will not fold it in this form because if I fold it in this form, I'm not going to get enough flow at the back. So I'm going to fold it in this form. Do you see it? You fold it like making a flare gown or a flare skirt. That is the way you are going to fold it. By so, you are going to have enough flow at the back but when you fold it straight you are not going to have it so you have to fold it in this form in see it that is the way you are going to fold it so now i'll fold it in this form i'll turn it 
so now guys do you see how i folded it do you see it so from here now we are going to measure our 36 inches so here is our 36 inches you can decide while coming down here to go a little a bit lower you can do that it will now flow also more so you can decide when you get to this side you go down by 40 inches you add more four inches it would make it to flow more so now i'll use this to connect it to here Do you see it? Do you see it? I came down by 40, by 4 inches here to make it 40 inches. That is here. That is going to be fixed to the skirt is 36 inches. And here that is going to be out. That is the tail. I made it to be 40. If you want, you can also make 36. But when you make it in this form, it is going to flow more. So now, guys, let's cut it out. So guys, do you see it? Do you see it? This is what we are going to fix at the back to have our tail. So now let's get our materials. Next thing to do now is to join our materials. Just take the back panel. I'll take the front panel and the back panel join them together after which i'll now show to you guys how to join the tail the tail after joining the back panel then we are going to join the tail and our skirt is ready we also hem it with our horse hair and our skirt is ready now guys i've taken in the front dart of the skirt do you see it and that's the back of it I have take it in do you see it so it's also the back panel i have taken in the darts of it do you see it this is one part of it and this is the other part and here is the zip allowance so now i now close up from the zip allowance which is eight inches it's eight inches then i now close down to four inches do you see it from here I close down to five inches so I stop from after the zip line I now close the back the two backs I close it in order to insert our tail so now we are going to insert our tail before closing it up finally so this is the back I have closed it up then take your tail this is the tail do you see it this is the tail. Do you see the tail now? So we are going to take it to fix here. So what we are going to do is just to take that's this point. Mark the center of it. Here is the center. At this point, here is the center. Mark the center of it. Then take here that you have just closed. Do you see it? Place it in this form. Then you pin it down. Do you see it? You pin it down. Then you sew it. There's another form that you can also use to insert this tail. You can also start from the down part of it. From the down. You can also start from the hem. And also take the hem of the tail. Do you see it? You start sewing it. You start sewing it. You start sewing it until you come to where you now close up. Do you see it? 
So we are going to do this by starting from the down to sew it to come up so that we have the normal, so that we will now have the normal measurement. So now start from the down to sew it. So let's sew. Just sew it gradually. I'll now stop and back stitch. You cut your thread to make it neat. Guys, do you see it? We have come to here, then I stop, then you now turn it back. That's the, the other panel. Then you now place it again so that you will start sewing. Do you see it? You now start from where you stop and you start sewing. Place it. Because you have marked the center so you know where to stop. Now you start sewing it down. To be sure, you can stop to check if it rhymes. You open it up to see if it looks good. Guys, do you see it looks good? Then you continue. Do you see how it is? It looks good. Do you see it? So you continue sewing. So you place it back. You place it back to continue sewing. So now I'm going to sew it and come down to the hem of it. Then I'll show it to you guys. Now guys, do you see our Still, I have fixed it. Just take your time. If it's not good, you lose it and you fix it back. But with the method I showed to you guys, it's easy to attach. Do you see it? So smooth. So the tail has been fixed to the back panel. Do you see now how it is? So I'm going to now join the back and the front panel together. Just take your front panel and the back panel join it together by taking in the half inch that we added to it now guys i have joined the front and the back together do you see it with our half inch seam allowance that we left i have joined it together but before joining the zip i would like us to achieve our band length remember while drafting we did not include the band i want to show to you guys another method you can use to achieve your band if you don't want to start it from the beginning you can measure your length after which you take in your band measurement so now I have joined the front and the back together let us achieve our band length now having joined both now place it back on your table remember we notched the measurement from the waist to the hip line we used eight inches from the waist to the hip line we used eight inches do you see it here so now to achieve your band you are going to minus from this eight inches so the band i want us to use or the band i will use is one and a half inch so from this eight inch here i'm going to minus one and a half inches so to do that, I'm going to just measure one and a half. Do you see it? I'll measure one and a half. 
also measure one and half. I'll measure one and half till I come to the end. Do you see it? If you don't want to start it from the beginning, you can fix your skirt after which you take in your band measurement. So this is our one and half here. Do you see it? Just mark it. This is our one and a half inch. That is a, another method to use if you don't want to start it. So this is where that is going to be your band. This is your band. This is your band measurement. But while cutting it, you are not going to cut from this one and a half. Remember, you have to attach it to your band. So you are going to cut at one inch. To use this half to join it to the band. So you can do it from the start or you can finish making your skirt and you achieve your band. It's also the same. So this is a new method. So I want us to learn to know the two ways that you can attach your band. Do you see it? Just make sure it's equal. Do you see it? So now I'm going to cut off this one inch. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to cut out this one inch. Now, this is our one inch we cut out as our band. We are going to replace it with this, the band. And I've cut out my one and a half inch band. Do you see it? I've cut it out. I measured four inches because I want it to be one and a half. So I measured four inches. As you can see, I've folded half inch. So I'm left with three and a half. So when you fold it in this form, you have one and a half and this half is to attach it to the skirt do you see it i repeat now i my band measurement is four inches but you see three and a half because i have folded the edge with a half inch so it's left with three and a half then you fold it again you have your one and a half inch do you see it and this other black we are seeing here is half inch that you are going to attach to your skirt and use this to cover it up. So now I'm going to now insert my zip. I'm going to insert my zip. After inserting my zip, then I will insert the band. After that, I will also hem the down part with crinoline. If you want, you can attach lining to it lining makes it to be more fitted if you want you can attach so i'm going to attach the lining also to this your lining you know you cut it the same way you cut this so but it's going to be shorter than the men's skirt the lining is going to be shorter than the men's skirt so now i'm going to attach my zip cover it with my lining and insert my band i will now show it to you guys how it looks now i have joined the band this is the back and this is the front do you see it so the next thing to do now is to use our crinoline to hem the down part of our skirt this is optional you can hem it without crinoline you can hem it with crinoline but i like using crinoline because it makes it to come out it makes it to be classic that is why i love using crinoline to beautify the down part of it but it is optional but if you want to use it it is advisable it will make it look more classy on the floor so now is to attach it as you can see i've started already just get your crinoline i'm using a black one this is it this is the roll that i'm using i think the one i'm using is about three inches is three inches do you see it the roll that i'm using is three inches that is the length 
that is how long it is that's the length is three inches that is what i'm using i have the roll so i'm going to use it and remember the more the down flays, the more you are going your crinoline will be more so now i'm going to now sew it so let's start just place your crinoline quarter inch just place it quarter inch from the hem that is from the down part of it do you see it just place it so that you can be able to top stitch it so now let's continue so i'm going to sew it all through then i'll show it to you guys Now, guys, I'm getting to the end of it. That is where I started. So, just watch closely. Where I started, before I start, I had to secure the crinoline so that it's not going to be uncomfortable at the body. So, now, when I get to this place, I'm going to also cut it and also secure it. So, just watch what I'm doing. So now I'm getting to it. Do you see it? So this is the place I'm going to cut it now. I'm going to cut it off. I've cut it, guys. So now let me take it out. So I have cut it. Do you see it? I've cut it. So I'm going to use this piece i'm going to use this piece to secure it like i did so that i'll put it on top to sew it together so now i'll take it out do you see it i'll take it out then i'll secure it do you see the little one just put it in this form that is the way i did before i started just to secure it so that it's not uncomfortable then you close it up. Do you see it? Then you put it back. Then you secure it. So that when it touches your body, it not hurts you. That stitch. Do you see it? I've just secured it. Then I'll cut it off. Then I'll cut on this side. Do you see it? I've secured it. Then I'll go back to the machine. So now join it to the one that i started with do you see it take it back so now i'm going to place it on top do you see it so i back stitch so now i place it on top of it i'll show it to you guys do you see it this is what i did do you see it so now i'm going to sew it together in this form you see it i'm going to sew it together in this form so i'm going i'm going to run a stitch you do this so that you secure it not to be uncomfortable so now guys we are almost getting there you cut your threads off now guys do you see it is now one piece do you see it so the next thing i will do now is to top stitch to top stitch i'll bring on the side of the crinoline i'm going to top stitch to make it look more beautiful if you want you can also top stitch it here because when you fold it back where that you top stitch will not go in do you see it if you top stitch it here when you fold it it will be in this form you can equally top stitch on the sides of the crinoline. Do you see it? You can top stitch. So we are going to top stitch on the side of the crinoline. So now I'm going to take it. It's a little bit. Take it easy. 
when sewing don't rush it so that you get what you want at the end do you see it now you press it down i'm stop stitching it on the side of the crinoline so that's it so now we are going to top stitch do you see what i'm doing after top stitching it we are going to close it finally i'm top stitching on the side of the crinoline do you see it guys so smooth do you see it so after that we will not close it up in this form it looks more beautiful so i'm going to now top stitch it when i come back to here i'll let i'll show it to you guys now guys i have finished top stitching it to the side of the green only do you see it do you see how smooth it is so the next thing is just to now top stitch it to hold the green only to the material do you understand just with the length just check the length since it is three inches just at the edge don't do it half it's not going to look good so at the edge here just quarter inches just quarter inch that you will use to run it do you see it to hold the crinoline to the material so let's do it so take it to your machine do you see what i'm doing try to check the back when sewing just try to check whatever you are doing so when it's not right you start it again that you start it afresh instead of finishing it and checking it is not good you start losing everything just when you are working check it it is not good you now correct it and continue working till you get your desired results so now i'm going to start so sew, sewing it with quarter inch do you see it Just place it very well so that the crinoline doesn't show here. Just place it good. Do you see it? Just take your time. Place it. Don't rush it. Do you see it? Now I'll start sewing it with quarter inch. Do you see it? So gradual to make it look more smooth. When sewing, you can turn to see if you are getting it. Do you see it? You can turn it to check if you are getting it or not. So continue sewing. Do you see it? So now let's see how far we have gone. Do you see it guys here there is opening you go back to sew it while sewing it it did not get to it just take it back and sew it do you see it so now i'm going to sew the crinoline at sewing when you get to any place that is joined try to open it up don't sew it together just try to open it up check it then you open it up before start sewing this is what i mean by opening it up do you see it you just open it up in this form do you see it to sew so that it looks smooth let's continue so guys i'm going to finish it up and i'll show it to you guys now i have finished sewing the crinoline to the skirts do you see it i have finished sewing it so but there's something I want to let you know. While attaching your crinoline, you know this is a flare on the down. Sometimes it's tricky. After attaching it to the skirt, turn it over to see if there are places that you did not stitch. Because being a stretchy material, it can be that while sewing, it did not get to the crinoline. 
just turn it for instance do you see this now do you see the opening so what i have to do is just to take it back to the machine to lose the thread that is why you have to use the matching thread while sewing it now you can't see it because i'm using a matching thread so that if there's any mistake you can easily correct it so now i'm going to take it back i will lose the thread then gradually i will sew it back do you see it so after sewing turn it to check if there's a place that is like this then you correct it and your skirt is ready so now guys i'm going to do it and put it on the mannequin for us to see how it looks already it's looking beautiful do you see it the, do you see the down do you see how the down is flowing because of the crinoli it makes it to come out do you see it and remember for your down to flow depends on your material how many yards of material you are using like the blue one i, I used two yards this one i we are making now i used three yards do you see it is going to flay more than the blue and also this one is a sokuba creeper material but the other one is a sokuba material a hard one so this is going to flow more than the blue so it depends on your material while making it the material you choose the texture of the material will also determine how it will come out so now i will correct it then fix it to the mannequin for us to check out how it looks i will now place the blue and this together for us to see the final look Now guys, this is the end result of our fish skirt with tail. This is the front part of it. Do you see how it looks? Do you see the beauty of the crinoline? Do you see how it flows on the floor? A celebratic fish skirt with tail. Do you see how it is? Now let us see how the back looks like. Now guys, do you see the back? That's the tail. Do you see how it flows with the crinoline? Remember, the how it flows depends on your material. One, the texture of the material and the number of yards you are using. Do you see how this flows? So beautiful. Do you see this is the back of our fish skirt with tail that we have just DIY. Just try one for yourself. Guys, do you see the blue and this one that we have just made? Do you see it? The one we've just made is the la The one we have just made flows more than the blue because of one, the texture of the material and also the number of yards that I used. Do you see it? So if you have less yards, you can still make it. If you have more yards you can also still make it so guys don't forget to share like and comment on my videos support me to grow this channel subscribe to my channel if you have not and please view my videos subscribe follow me on facebook and on instagram ij designs on facebook iconic ig and on our new page IJ Iconic Fashion. There we also share knowledge of fashion. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Please, please, please support me. Bye.